Hello, my name is Katie Brudenell and I'm the Head of Physics at St Helen and St Catherine in Abingdon and my talk today is about how we use Excel to support our students when they're doing practical work both at GCSE and at A-level. So I don't know about you but I seem to use Excel an inordinate amount in my day-to-day -day life and truthfully I think one of the most important things we can teach our students in schools is how they can use spreadsheets competently and confidently. Now I know an awful lot of schools and an awful lot of teachers are really adept in their use of spreadsheets but actually in my experience a lot of my students are wary of them, intimidated by them, don't really know what they're doing with them and if we can help them learn and develop the skills which they uh, can have to use spreadsheets then I think we're doing them a really important life favour. One of the reasons we like to use spreadsheets is the ability to share a spreadsheet and for students to work straight into it. By doing this, we're able to streamline our practicals. We can have the spreadsheet ready in advance. We can have the devices ready in advance so that students can just pick up and go with it. We know that the formatting allows data to be inputted and graphs to be produced that are correct and that students can interpret them easily. Most importantly, doing all of this means that a practical, practical excuse me, can be done in just a few minutes rather than the prolonged undertaking of drawing results tables, collecting data, processing data, plotting graphs, checking graphs. It also means that from our own device, we can see all of the results that the students are gathering. And it means that we can tweak, adjust, question, comment on what the students are doing to make sure they're doing it correctly. When we start doing these activities, generally in year nine or year 10, there's quite a lot of scaffold involved. We've heavily formatted the spreadsheets ourselves so that the students have to do very little with it. And as the students work their way up through the years, we remove gradually the level of programming and processing that we have done so that by the sixth form, the students are able to format their own spreadsheets. They can put in their own formulas. They can build their own graphs. We do this because we note that in the core practical assessment criteria, the CPAC statements, statement five suggests that students should be able to use tools and software to process uh, their results and uh, get findings. Now, there are a number of different practicals that we like to use these with, and we're kind of expanding our range that we do it uh, with continually. The primary one that we've done for a number of years now is our investigative work into ohmic and non-ohmic conductors, our use of thermistors, LDRs, diodes and filament bulbs, which I'm going to show you how we do that. We also use it with our year 11 students when we do our radioactivity topic to build um, more accurate graphs of half-life using the half-life dice practical that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And the other place we use it with our sixth formers is when they are doing their core practical number four, which is the investigation into Young's modulus, which we do with copper wire. And I'm going to talk you through each of our practicals, show you our spreadsheets and explain how we use them to help streamline our practical work. So if we start with our non-omic conductors practical, what you can see here on the screen is what the students would see when they come into class. On the left is a picture of my classroom whiteboard and the students can see an image of what they're expecting to find on their devices, so an image of the spreadsheet, and we've also got the QR code up there. Now, we get the QR code because our spreadsheets are in our shared drive, and if we elect to share the spreadsheet document via a hyperlink, which generates a URL, we can use that URL to make a QR code. Most web browsers can do it automatically, but if you don't know how to do that, you just Google QR code generator and pop them in. The reason we like the QR code is because we like to use the iPads to do this on. We've got a class set of iPads, we can book the iPads for the lesson, and by using the QR code, it means that I can grab the class set of iPads, I can scan the QR code with each document, and within about two minutes, I can have the whole class set of devices up and running ready before the students come into the room. If the iPads aren't available or we need to use laptops or anything like that, we generally share the URL via Microsoft Teams, which is our classroom software. Students click the link and they go straight to the shared document, meaning that they are ready to start the lesson um, and everything is in place 
before any complexities arise. OK, so this is the iPad version of the spreadsheet. This is what it looks like on the iPads. I will show you what it looks like on the laptops in a second. But the reason I want to show you this is because of how we set it up for our class. And what you'll see is I've got a blank template. And then all the way along the bottom, what you can see is I've got tabs with students' names on it, and I've made a tab for each of the students. This is for my sixth form class, but if it was for the year 10 class, I'd have them for each pair that were doing the exercise. The joy of the iPad is it's really easy to replicate the tabs. If I flick across, you can see I've got sight of everything that the students have done. And the way that I made the tabs on here was you literally click on the tab at the bottom, the, the um, toolbar comes up, you click duplicate, it magically duplicates it. You click again, you rename. It's so much easier doing it this way than it is on the laptop. The PC way is very, very clunky. So this is the laptop version of the spreadsheet. Um, and I've got it open on here because this is a blank version of it. And what you can see, I've zoomed in a bit closer. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more, actually. And what you can see down the left is I have got the slides the cells even pre-set up for a fixed resistor, a filament bulb, a thermistor, an LDR and a diode down the bottom. And you can see in some instances we've put the select voltages in that we want the students to use. For the sake of the thermistor we've left it blank uh, and for the fixed resistor we've actually left it blank because that will work with or whatever. And um, I have put in the um, graph and I've put it in with all the correct labels and axes and, and all the settings are correct. I've done that. But you can see by the coloured versions here that that graph relates to the fixed resistor. Down here, the voltage current graph will um, link to the filament bulb here, as it says. Going down, you'll have um, this one here will be my thermistor, etc, etc. And what you can see is um, as a teacher I would sit here and my students would be filling in the spreadsheet as they go along and I can flick through and I can see what it is they're doing. So here's Maddie for instance and she has put in her numbers, she's taken readings for current and she's got herself a beautiful straight line relationship. Moving down we've got her filament bulb. Filament bulbs are always a bit tricky, um, there is a definite curve there. Uh, I think we can refine that a little bit more if we wanted to. The thermistor ones are always good and the LDR ones that we have um, and Maddie hadn't yet filled in the diode but if we have a look down here this student Hannah had filled in the diode and we get some lovely data for the diodes. So this is a practical that really does only take them a very short length of time. We do it as a circus um, and the, the students really do manage to get the required graphs very very easily. OK, so if we move on to my second example practical, this is one I'm sure loads of you are familiar with. It is the radioactive decay of dice. Um, we get the students to throw 100 little wooden cubes. We don't use dice, actually, and you can see a picture of them there on the screen. They chuck them on the desk. They work out how many of them landed with the coloured side up, which represents a decay event. They remove the decayed dice, they recount, they record, and they go again, and they keep going and keep going until all their dice have decayed. And once they've collected all of their data, they can plot a lovely graph of a uh, number of dice versus number of throws and get a super exponential decay curve. And it's a guaranteed practical that works brilliantly. OK, so just so that you're aware of what our cubes look like, I've got some here. Uh, we actually have three different sets of cubes. Uh, we just ordered loads of little wooden cubes and uh, our amazing lab tech coloured in a load of their sides. So our green set have just one face coloured in. Our blue set have got two faces coloured in and our red set have got three faces coloured in. And what that means is our red, green and blue ones, which I'm going to try and get up here. Oh, <laughs> red, green and blue uh, give us different half-lives for each different colour, which means we can build three different sets of data and students can then extrapolate off their graphs and determine what the half-life of uh, the red dice are, the half-life of the green dice are and the half-life of the blue dice are. So it's a really easy, really inexpensive way of doing OK, so the radioactive decay one is a really simple spreadsheet to do. Uh, but what we do this time is we get everyone to build into the same tab. 
So we've got on here, we've got number of thro throws down the left-hand side and the eight groups that will be doing the practical at any one time. We haven't got eight sets of the dice. We've got, we've got a few different sets of the dice, but they swap them around amongst themselves. So we've got eight groups. Uh, we found the average over here and we've got ourselves rather a super decay curve. And what we have discovered is by doing multiple sets of data and finding the mean average, we get much, much more specific exponential decays. They're almost always bang on. So there are the green cubes. And if you have a look, we've got a tab here for the blue cubes, uh, which has got a much um, shorter half-life. And then our red cubes there, it's very steep exponential. They've got an incredibly short half-life. They're the ones with the more sides, so they decay, decay more regularly. Okay, so my third example practical is a sixth form practical. We have been doing this with our year 12 students. It is AQA's core practical number four, which is the investigation into the Young's modulus of copper wire. Be under no illusion, this spreadsheet is not the student's first exposure to spreadsheets in the sixth form. We've done an awful lot of preparatory work, an awful lot of class practicals, an awful lot of coaching and learning around how to structure spreadsheets so that they are clear and easily interpretable how to put in formulae so that the spreadsheet does the heavy lifting for you, and how to make sure you generate graphs that have got the correct things on the correct axis, put in trend lines, etc., so that you can get completely the right result. So this example in front of us is one student's work, and you'll notice again, we've got the tabs along the bottom so that I as a teacher can see what each of the students is up to. It's a shared document. What I'm looking for with this is students to have um, the correct number of significant figures in the columns appropriate to what they should be doing. And if you're eagle eyed, you'll notice that this student hasn't quite got the right number of sig figs in there. We're looking for their formatting to be correct. So they're using formulae appropriately. And if we zoom in, um, you can see a little bit clearer what the student has done at every stage. And if I click in, um, excuse me, I think I'm about to do it. There we go. If I click into some of these cells, you can see on the tab, um, the formula bar, sorry, at the top there, that this student is starting to use really nice complex formulae, including using pi, finding averages, and using the dollar sign to fix values when they drag formulae down. They're also able to plot graphs. This student got a remarkably good value for the Young's modulus, um, I should say. Um, and their graphs are all ever so slightly different. Some of them are formatted the way that I would want them. Some are slightly different, but they all work. They're all correct. Now, regarding their use of significant figures, one of my recent students, Hannah, showed me an absolutely magic button. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. I used to always go in through right click, format cells, format number, and sort out my decimal places. But there are two little buttons here, little magic buttons, that do all of that work for you. They will sort out your column so that they have all got all the numbers within it have got the same number of decimal places, which is a little bit of magic and um, something that my students use really effectively now to make sure their data is of the correct number of decimal places. From this practical, they move on. Having developed the skills, they can do Boyle's law, they can do Charles's law, they can do lots of their field work, the electric fields and the magnetic fields practicals uh, and the capacitance practicals all using Excel. And it just makes life so much quicker, so much easier. And I can have a good look at what they're doing. So I hope that that was of some use. Uh, certainly we have found that by using Excel like this, we are able to make our practical work much, much quicker, which means our students can do the practical, uh, get results that we know are correct get the graphs done super quickly, and we can then spend the time analyzing, reflecting, evaluating, having a look at what the data actually means, which surely is a much more effective use of class time. These practicals in our experience used to take a very, very long time, and students were getting a real old muddle with it. So we do feel that this is a better way of doing it. Hopefully you might feel enabled by it, and hopefully you guys might be able to have a go. If anybody's got any other ideas on how we might develop this, further use it, share it, etc., do please let me know. We're always open to suggestion. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your time.